Tonight I'd like to challenge everything you think you know about the concept of accessibility. It's a concept that bridges my work as a disability rights advocate and a political theorist. It touches on all aspects of society and government and all of you individually. And it just might save our country from its current crisis of confidence. Let me explain. I first learned about the power and beauty of accessibility through the avenue you might expect, disability advocacy. I was able to go to Duke because I had incredible support from my family and Duke administrators. They helped ensure that I was well accommodated, that I could access all my classrooms, and that I could thrive. They also helped ensure I could attend fun concerts like the last day of classes conference occurring this evening, and Dean Sue, when I saw her this evening, slapped a wristband on my wrist, so I couldn't even miss out even if I was in a different city. Um, but, but it turns out that most people don't have a Dean Sue. I realized not long after starting college that most people in similar situations as me aren't so lucky. You know, Duke isn't perfect, but many colleges don't even bother to ensure that the college experience could be accessible to those with disabilities. This inspired me to start a nonprofit organization, which I called Ramp Less Traveled, to help those with disabilities in the pursuit of higher education. It turns out that there are all sorts of logistical and psychological barriers that keep otherwise perfectly talented students from attending college. Under the auspices of Ramp Less Traveled, I, create, I created an, an administrator, um, a mentoring and scholarship program that so far helped enable seven students to attend college. So accessibility is important because it helps those with disabilities lead the kind of meaningful lives they were always capable of leading. But it's also so much more than that. Because I came to realize that the problem I'm interested in addressing, achieving full accessibility for all citizens, isn't just limited to disability advocacy. It's so much more than that. It requires understanding the identity of every person and preference and the primacy of power. It requires looking at the structural forces that lurk behind every individual instance of exclusion. True accessibility, in other words, requires a political understanding. Now, since I made this realization, I've devoted my academic work largely to the study of political theory to help me understand this deeper nature of public life. In particular, I became fascinated by this idea called deliberative democracy. Deliberative democracy is a way of understanding politics that privileges everyday interactions among the citizenry as the primary source of government legitimacy. It suggests that we should, only suggest, we should only accept decisions that have been preceded by rational and engaged deliberation. So instead of just focusing on the formal components of our government, things like Congress, the presidency, voting mechanisms, deliberative democracy reminds us that our government is most basically a conversation among all of us. Now, you'll have to excuse me for being a little abstract. That's the political philosopher in me. Um, but I really am passionate about wielding these large theoretical insights for practical effect. And in practice, I think that deliberative democracy looks a lot like accessibility. If the strength of our democracy depends on reciprocal relationships among the citizenry, then all citizens' perspectives are valuable. In fact, all are necessary. And that's why accessibility touches all of us, all of you. Ensuring equal and inclusive access for all citizens doesn't just help those who have been traditionally marginalized from society, though of course it does. It helps everyone. When everyone's welcome to the table, they bring their ideas and their energies and visions with them. They challenge us. They teach us. They allow us to become our best selves. So we see how the ideal of deliberative democracy gives us a political vocabulary for understanding the full importance of accessibility and for unlocking it. And conversely, accessibility shows us what's so important about democracy in the first place. I contend that accessibility, properly understood, is one of the most foundational principles of our country, one of the ones on which it was founded. Because when we think about what makes America so special, we often remember that this is the land of opportunity. We pride ourselves on our commitment to the idea that no matter where you come from, who you are, or what you look like, your future is as bright as you care to light it. 
This is America's promise. Here we see that accessibility is inscribed in, in the very DNA of our country. It's the unfinished goal on which America was founded. And it's really no secret that this goal remains unfulfilled. Just like the realm of higher education remains inaccessible to countless students with disabilities, so many other sectors of public and private life remain inaccessible, remain liable to privilege some groups over others. The good news is that political theory ideals, like deliberative democracy, can help us reach towards solutions to these defining challenges of our times. Remember, the government is us, and none of us should take this radical degree of personal agency lightly. Accessibility shows the best of what our political life can become. So the ideal of accessibility shouldn't just be limited to the disability conversation. It shouldn't just evoke pictures of ramps or braille or sign language or any of that. It encourages us to remember what the best of what our political life can become. Because the realm of politics and reality is ubiquitous. It's all around us all the time. And so that means that embedded within all of our daily interactions lies a chance to reach for a better world. It encourages us to stretch for solutions we thought were impossible to try harder, to reach further, and to think bolder about the kind of society we thought we had all along. So the next time you feel disheartened by our polarization, our incivility, our, our lack of faith in our democracy and in ourselves, I want you to remember something. Remember that the power to remake our world resides within each of us. Because as the ideal of accessibility shows, Things can be different. Things can be different, but only if we make them so. Only if all of us make them so. Thank you. <laughs>